Welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how you can set up a shared cluster in MongoDB Atlas. After signing in into the MongoDB Atlas, this is what you are going to have. So, the first step is to create a database and for that I am going to click build a database button in the database deployments. Here, I am going to select the shared tier and now it gives me an option to create a shared cluster. Here you have to select a region. I am going to select the default value. You have to select a region where you want to deploy your database. I am going with the default value. Uh, you can change the cluster tier and additional settings and you can give a cluster name. I am going to name it my cluster. And then click create cluster. You can see that it is asking us how would you like to authenticate your connection? I'm going to select username and password. You can also select certificate. Here I'm going to provide a username and a password. Then I'm going to click create user. And this is going to create the credentials for the user, which will be used to access this database. Then it asks us where would you like to connect from? I'm going to click the my local environment because this is what it allows on the free tier. Okay, then we have to provide the list of IP addresses that will be able to connect to this project's clusters or the project's database. So you can provide your uh, system IP address. I am going to simply assign 0.0.0, .0 so that all the connections are allowed for this database and then click finish and close. The deployment is going to take some time and once it is created, you can either create an, another database in the cluster or you can connect to the cluster what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to this cluster here you have different options connect with the mongo shell connect your application connect using mongodb compass and connect using vs code I'm going to select the connect using mongodb compass so that I can visualize the data and insert it here it asks you if you have a mongodb compass or not if you do not have a compass it provides you the link so that you can download it but I already have a compass so I'm going to select this value and here it has provided me the connection string through which I'm going to connect to the database using the mongodb compass okay I'm going to copy this and you can close this so this is how you can set up a cluster in mongodb atlas in the previous video you learned how you can create a cluster in mongodb atlas now I am going to show you how you can connect your MongoDB Atlas with the MongoDB Compass. Move towards your MongoDB Compass and here in the URI place the connection string and in the password value you have to provide the password which you created while creating the user. Okay and then simply click connect. The connection is going to take some time and after a while it will be connected. Here you can see that two default databases are present in the cluster. Let's create a new one. I'm going to call it PetDB and I'm going to create a collection called Pet and create database. Okay, so after that, we'll add some data into the cluster. I'm going to insert a document. You can either add data using the JSON notation or you can change the value to this value. Here you can simply click add and add the field. And the value for it okay then add another shield and simply click insert and this way you can add multiple documents inside the collection in this video we are going to explore the table view in mongodb compass and mongodb atlas so we are going to start by seeing whether this has been connected to our database or not go back to your mongodb atlas here click on the collector name and once you are within the cluster, you will see different tabs here. Click on collections and inside the collection, you will see that the database that we created using the MongoDB compass has been created with the collection pets. And once I click the collection, it is going to show me the data that I inserted from the MongoDB compass. Okay, so this is a way to connect the MongoDB atlas to the MongoDB compass you, and insert documents from there. You can also insert a document from the atlas itself by clicking this insert document button here you can provide the values like name and give it certain name add another field age 
give it an age okay simply insert it data has been inserted now let's check whether it is inserted in the mongodb compass or not i'm going to refresh it and you can see that data has been inserted here as well okay so this is a basic use of mongodb atlas you can also allow the data api to access the application and grant it the read and write access here you have to select the cluster for which you want to enable the api i'm going to select this cluster and then i'm going to click enable data access from the data api this is going to take some time so just wait this is how you can enable the data api there are other options for example you can add different type of triggers right now it does not have any trigger you can also change the database access by adding any new user or assigning roles to different users you can also change the network access here i have provided the ip address so that all users can connect to this database you can also add any custom ip address for example of your own device of, or of your own team so that only limited number of people can access the database in this video i'm going to show you how you can import different types of files into the mongodb compass the first step in using the mongodb compass is to make a connection you can either make connection with your local server or with an online server after establishing a connection we will add a new database by clicking the plus button beside database and i'm going to provide a database name and a collection name in order to import the data i am going to navigate to the collection and then click the import data button present in green in the bottom of the screen then i am going to select the file type and the actual file which i want to import into the database after selecting the data file click on import and then click done and you will see that all the data present in the file has been successfully imported into our sample collection of the sample db and similarly you can also import a csv file into your mongodb collection welcome back in this video i'm going to show you how you can query the data using the mongodb compass now we are going to see how we can query the documents present in the collection using the mongodb compass so for querying the data you can use this filter part of the mongodb compass here you have to define the field on the basis of which you want to filter out the result for example if i want to have all the documents for all the pets where age is greater than 5 i am going to write this query here here first you have to define the attribute on the basis of which you want to filter out the result and then you have to define the condition so since i want the age to be greater than 5 so i'm going to use this greater attribute and i'm going to define 5 here so what this is going to do is it is going to filter out the documents where age is greater than 5 now upon clicking find you will see that all the documents in the output have been filtered on the basis of age greater than 5 but you can see that all the records are randomly placed there is no sequence in it so if you want to further modify the data so in order to sort out the data you can use this sort field here here you simply have to define the field on the basis of which you want to sort so since i want to sort on the basis of age so i'm going to say age and set it to one okay now when i will click find it is going to sort the documents on the basis of age in ascending order okay so our data has been sorted now but you can see that all the records present in the document for example pet id name kind gender age owner everything is showing in the output if i want to display only the pet id name and age of the pet for that i can use this project attribute here you have to define all the attributes for which you want to display in the output i want pet id so i'm going to set it to one separated by comma that i want to have name set it to 1 and I want to have age in the output and set it to 1 okay now let click find now you can see that our result set is restricted to only pet id name and age but you can see that this auto generated object id is being displayed for each document if we want to remove it too you, we can simply do one thing in the project after age add a comma and simply write underscore id and set it to 0 
This means that we do not want this attribute to be a part of our output. Now let's click find. You can see that ID has been removed. Now there are two other options like skip and limit. Skip is used to skip any particular number of rows from the output starting from the first row. For example, if you want to skip first five rows from the output, you can write five here and click find. So the first five rows will be skipped. Okay. Now, if I want to limit, limit is used to limit the output to a certain number of records. For example, if I only want to display 10 documents from the pets collection, I'm going to limit it to 10. And when I click find, you will see only the top five documents from the collection have been displayed in the output. In this way, you can use project sort collation skip and limit to query your database and filter out the result in different ways. And that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.